we'd like to be able to write an expression for the voltage and the current as functions of time. And it turns out the way that we can do that, assuming that the voltage or the current starts off at time t equal to zero, equal to zero, and follows a sinusoidal um, waveform, is that uh, in that case, the voltage can be written as whatever the amplitude of that sine wave is times sine omega t, and where omega is our angular frequency, which is 2 pi over the period. And this should make sense because if we replace, if we replace the <clears throat> angular frequency with 2 pi over the period, we get an expression now that will be in terms of radians if we plug in time. So if our period was in seconds and then we plugged in a specific time, we would have sine of some angle in radians. So let's just show that this makes sense, that I get this pattern. So if I were to say, there's a lot on this slide, so I'm going to point to it. So if I plug in time t equal to zero into this expression here, then I would put the time as zero. Of course, zero times anything is zero, so I would get sine of zero, which is zero. And so the voltage at time t equal to zero would be zero. And that makes sense, because that's right here. Now, one complete cycle is one period. So that would be over here, that's one complete cycle. A half of a cycle would be the halfway point. And then a quarter of the cycle would be over here, which is basically halfway between zero and the halfway point. So let's see what happens if I put in a quarter of a cycle. So if I plug in a quarter of a cycle, I would do the same thing. I would put in a time of one quarter of a period. So when I plug in one quarter of, quarter of the period here, the periods cancel. I've got a four and a two, so it becomes pi over two. And we know that sine of pi over two is just sine of 90, which is just one. So I get the maximum amplitude. And that's what's happening here after a quarter of a period. If I plug in a half of a period, I can go through exactly the same thing. I plug in the time as a half of a period. Periods cancel, the twos cancel. I get sine of pi. Sine of pi is sine of 180 degrees, and so that would be zero, and that makes sense because over here on my picture is where I would be at half of the cycle or half of the period, and I would be at zero again. If I look at three quarters of a period, it should be somewhere down here in my picture, and it should have a negative value. So if I plug in three quarters of a period, I go through the same process. I get sine of 3 pi over 2, which is sine of 270 degrees. Sine of 270 is negative 1, and so I get negative the maximum amplitude down here, which also makes sense. And then after I get back and I go through one cycle or one period, I get sine of 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is 0 again. So using this expression makes sense in terms of what the angular frequency represents. It's representing essentially the angle that I cover in one period. And so if I go through one period in terms of the time, I'm going to get back to where I started again. It's also important that we realize that our axes on the horizontal can be different. And so it's possible that we could have the angular um, value represented on the horizontal axis. And so we have to realize that one cycle represents 370 degrees, excuse me, 360 degrees. Um, we have to also realize it could be radians. And in that case, that means that um, one cycle is two pi radians. But probably what's more important is to realize that most of the time, our voltage supplies and current supplies are going to be functions of time. So when we look at those waveforms, the time axis is going to be represented, and so we have to realize that one cycle on the time axis is equal to a period, but also that one period is the same thing as 2 pi radians, which is also the same thing as 360 degrees. So we're often going to have to convert between degrees, radians, and this period, which will be in seconds. We'll see more of that later. All right, well, what happens if your voltage supply or your current supply
are not equal to zero at time t equal to zero. In other words, they're shifted so that maybe at time t equal to zero, your voltage is actually halfway between its zero value and its maximum value. We call that a phase shift. And I want to point out that everything we're talking about here is, is appropriate for both voltage supplies and current supplies. So my pictures also show voltage supplies, and even in the previous pictures it was voltage supplies. But the same thing would be true for current supplies. So if our waveform is shifted to the left, meaning that if I wanted to draw this as a sine wave starting at zero, um, I'd have to backtrack on my time t equal to zero graph to put that in. So it appears as if that waveform has shifted to the left so that I have zero. If I know what that angle is that it has shifted, then I can write down the voltage as a function of time as being the maximum value sine omega t, and then I have to add whatever that shift was to the left. If you think about it, if you put in time t equal to zero here, you would have whatever the maximum is times sine of some angle. Well, sine of that angle, if it's not zero, has some value associated with it that's between zero and one, and that's why I have at time t equal to zero, my voltage is actually not at zero, it's at some other value. In the same regard, if I shifted my waveform to the right, so here's my sine wave, and it's, here's the zero, it's not on the origin, it has actually shifted to the right some angle theta, then I can write down the voltage as being the maximum times sine omega t, and then I have to subtract off the angle. And again, that should make sense, because if, if I put in time t equal to zero here, I have sine of negative the angle. Well, sine of a negative angle, um, in, as long as it's between zero and 90 degrees, is actually negative of sine of the angle, so I would get a negative voltage, and that's exactly what's happening here at time t equal to zero. So anything that's shifted to the left has an, uh, a positive phase shift, and anything that's shifted to the right has a negative phase shift angle. And we're going to do some examples with that.